this is probably my favorite car of the year so far. I recently saw Jack's episode on the City Transformer in Munich. You know, the one where the wheels went in and out. And I thought, that's a great car. I love small city cars, we all do. But I thought sometimes I think they're trying to do these things to grab headlines. What we really need is true innovation to really help people. So that's why I've come here, FOM. It's the FOM workshop in Yokohama in Japan to look at these three cars behind me. At the end is the FOM Concept 1. The one in the middle is the FOM 1. And this one is the rather striking FOM Sports Concept. What if I told you you could drive a car in a completely different way from anything else on the road? Then what if I told you that these also float on water? That's right. Oh, and they do battery swapping, yes, that's right. Welcome to FOM and welcome to the Fully Charged Show. If you like the Fully Charged Show, then you'll love our live events. Next up, we're in Amsterdam for Fully Charged Live Europe on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. Get your tickets today. So I want to start with the FOM Concept 1 and there's a lot of farty motorbikes going past. So I want to start with the concept back from 2013, 2014, the Concept 1, that's this one here. And you can see how they've begun to even start this process by thinking differently. Now, first of all, the frame, the roll cage is on the outside. Very unusual. And they put all of the plastic panels on the outside. Number two, it's got a sliding door. Very practical for getting in and out. But the most revolutionary thing is how you drive this. Because it's got basically motorbike handlebars. Now, a lot of people in Thailand might have just come off a motorbike themselves and be looking to upgrade, but they're not familiar with the steering wheel and pedals. They want something which is more familiar to them, something that they're used to. And so this is where this concept came up. Now it did change slightly for the actual production car, but I do like where they're going with this. This has some really, really neat features. And the first thing I want to point out is these wheels, okay? There's two reasons. So the car floats on water, and then these fins help it push itself along, about two to three kilometers an hour, as long as there isn't a strong current. These can glide about in the water. They're not really meant for a recreational use like that. However, if there was a flood and you needed to get onto the nearest bank, this car could do that. The other thing is this has in-hub motors. So the, the motors are behind each wheel. So this wheel and that wheel. So this one's got two motors in it. And of course, hub motors are meant to be a bit more efficient, they're more compact, which means the space for the occupants inside is gonna be a lot more. Now the look of this car isn't my favorite thing. This is based on the Kabuki style of makeup. I'm not familiar with that myself. Um, but this can easily fit two adults and two children in the back. There's no boot space to think of. I think that you could fit a little piece of paper in here. Here's your charger, about five hours to charge the battery, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. So why have they done these in-hub motors? Well, it's pretty simple really, because they wanna make the manufacturing process a lot simpler, a lot more streamlined, hub motors are the way to go. You literally just plug them into either corner, wire them up, and that's it. And these hub motors, they don't provide a great deal of power, but they are very efficient. So they're 10 kilowatt electric motors, uh, providing up to 80 kilometers an hour of top speed, acceleration 8.5 seconds to 50 kilometers an hour, not that fast, and about 560 newton meters of torque. So, you know, not going to be winning any world speed records, but it doesn't need to. It's a practical city run around or rural run around even. But let me show you what's on the inside because the way this thing drives is so unique, I still haven't got used to it. So join me on the inside. You go that way. Right, first of all, you'll notice the Tesla yoke. Can we not call it a Tesla yoke? Can we just call it a yoke? So it does have a yoke. But then down here, it's just got one pedal. One pedal. So where do you accelerate? That's the brake. Where's the accelerator? The flappy paddles. It's got flappy paddle acceleration. And if you press one, it goes kind of slow. If you press two, it goes even faster. So this is how you accelerate, and that's how you brake. It's 
takes a little bit getting used to, but it's pretty incredible. So let's have a look at how this drives. So this one is the FOM one. And this is a bit of a challenge to film in, let me tell you, because it's tiny. That's the reversing beep beep. So again, we've got the two handles on the accelerator and we, off we go. It's pretty rapid. Well, actually, very rapid in a small car park. But it's to feather the throttle with your finger feels so much more kind of natural than perhaps with your foot. You've got a lot more control through your fingers than you do perhaps through your foot. It's pretty noisy in here. You can hear the rump, uh, the creaks and the bumps and the rattles, but you know it's it's not a luxury Maybach, so I think we can forgive it that. So what I neglected to tell you was about the battery swapping in this car. So this car is a 12 kilowatt hour battery, but these can all be swapped. And I say all because they're actually split into four packs. So one of the packs is here, one of the packs is on the other side, and these can be taken out, plugged in someone's house and changed again. So you could just take out one or two, you could take out all four. So there's one there, one on that side, and then the other two are hidden around the back. And that is where the other two batteries live. Now, this is really good because the car does about 160 kilometers of range, but if you get to another rural location, you've got one of these FOM battery swapping stations, you know, you can just swap them out very quickly, very easily, and then they can be trickle charged overnight uh, in order to provide power for the next day. This is built for a grid which doesn't support these massive connections and which maybe will get those connections in 10 to 15 years. Now this is the sports concept and what they've done is taken all of the components from the one and stuck them in here but given them a bit of an upgrade. So this has the same 12 kilowatt hour battery but it has the four motors, one in each wheel, which really does give it a lot of oomph. And just look at it, it's fab. It looks like a mini Honda K car. It's got these really nice venti bits in here. Ooh, lots of wrapped in carbon fiber, but I want to show you the best bit because it's a sports car. So it needs to have gold wing doors, right? Look at that. Look at that. Now, excuse me while I get into my tiny K car sports car powered by electricity. Ah. Ingress is not the easiest. There you go, close the door. And this is wrapped in proper carbon fiber, right, really solid aluminium uh, parts as well. But again, the components are exactly the same. So I've got the same LCD screen here. I've got another one over there and I've got a screen here, which I think would replace uh, your door mirrors because this hasn't got any door mirrors. I've got a few uh, nice aircraft toggle switches down here. But again, all of this stuff doesn't really matter. It's about driving and driving this, even in a car park up to about 21 kilometers an hour, is such a thrilling feeling. And this is what manufacturers need to focus on, is that, that feeling of driving an electric car. Yes, it's small, it doesn't have a big range, big power, but this is such a good experience. And I wish more manufacturers would do this. Now, there isn't much else in terms of information about this car at the moment, but they're hoping to bring it to market in just about a year to 18 months. What a fantastic car. Now let's go for a little spin around the car park, shall we? That's two hands and that's fast. And I'm not even pulling my hands completely on the, uh, the wheel at this point. It's very weird. You just push it down and... Oh, you can just do one if you want to go a bit slower. I mean, it's not really testing the limits of this car. We're just reversing and going forwards. But it's fun feeling the wind in, in my head. We get up to about 15 miles an hour. Whee! Ooh. I don't know if I'm sure about those brakes at this point. I'd love to, to go on the street in this. How much fun would that be? Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. You've really got to admire what the guys at FOM have done. They could have gone ahead and built another SUV or a sports car that no one can afford. But they've thought about difficult environments, rural environments, and for that, I really do like what they've done here. But what really needs to happen is that the 
fellow automakers in Japan, the Toyotas, the Hondas, should come down to FOM and learn a lesson or two about how to make EVs.